Imagine this instead of SpaceX's Crew Dragon launching on a Falcon 9. We see it riding inside Starship. Sounds wild, right? But it's actually one of the most intriguing ideas floating around in the space community. A bold concept that could simplify NASA's complex Artemis program, which many say is at risk of falling behind China in the new space race. This approach comes with some surprisingly clear advantages, especially since it could require far fewer upgrades to Crew Dragon compared to other mission plans. But here's the big question. What does the space community really think about this idea? Could it actually work? Or is it just too impractical to ever fly? Let's find out in today's episode of Tech Map. You've probably heard people talking about a new space race, and this time it's not the US versus the Soviet Union, it's America versus China. But here's the surprising part, experts say the US might actually be at risk of falling behind. So, what's going on? According to many space insiders, the biggest culprit is NASA's Artemis program, the initiative that's supposed to take astronauts back to the moon and eventually to Mars. Sounds epic, right? But there's a catch, the program's complexity is becoming its biggest weakness. At the heart of Artemis are two key pieces of technology, the Space Launch System SLS rocket and the Orion spacecraft. Both are incredible feats of engineering. But they also come with major baggage. They rely on older tech, have a history of technical challenges. And maybe worst of all, they're funded under cost-plus contracts, meaning contractors get reimbursed no matter how much things cost or how long they take. That system might have worked decades ago, but today it's creating massive delays, budget overruns and uncertainty. Meanwhile, China's space program is moving fast using a much more streamlined and focused approach that could put them ahead in the race to build a permanent lunar presence. Now, NASA isn't publicly admitting that SLS and Orion are slowing things down, and they're definitely not planning to ditch them, at least not yet. Instead, they've turned to their private partners, SpaceX and Blue Origin, asking them to come up with ways to speed up the human landing system, the critical piece that will actually land astronauts on the moon. Neither company has revealed exactly how they plan to do it, but the space community is buzzing with speculation. The consensus, NASA should eventually phase out SLS and Orion entirely, yes, seriously, and lean more on commercial spacecraft like SpaceX's Starship or an upgraded Crew Dragon. These next-gen vehicles are built for reusability run under fixed-price contracts and offer a faster, cheaper, and more efficient path forward. There are a number of different mission architectures that could involve Starship and Dragon, one of which I think is quite interesting, which is to put the Dragon spacecraft inside Starship. Yeah, you heard that right. We launch a Crew Dragon into orbit and then either stash it inside the Lunar Starship or dock it to the front. From there, Starship would carry the Dragon all the way to lunar orbit, drop it off like a cosmic taxi. And after the surface mission, the astronauts would climb back into the Dragon for the return trip home. Now here's why that idea is so fascinating and actually pretty practical. Starship's massive payload capacity over 100 tons to low Earth orbit means it could comfortably haul not just a Dragon capsule, but also a kickstage to push the combo toward the Moon. Once in lunar orbit, Dragon takes over for the ride home. This mission architecture offers some serious advantages over NASA's traditional Artemis approach. First, the Crew Dragon only needs to provide about 450 meters per second of delta V. That's just enough for the journey from lunar orbit back to Earth. That's a relatively tiny propulsion requirement compared to what a full lunar mission would demand. Second Dragon's life support system doesn't need massive upgrades. It's already designed to support four astronauts for around four days. And conveniently, that's about how long the trip from lunar orbit to Earth takes three to four days. So the existing systems for oxygen water power and CO2 scrubbing would likely be enough with only small tweaks. 
Here's what that means in practical terms. No major increase in oxygen or water storage. Life support remains pretty similar to what's already proven on Earth orbital missions. Only minor thermal protection upgrades would be needed to handle the higher re-entry speeds from the moon. Consumables like CO2 scrubbers might just need simple replacements instead of a total redesign. Power systems might get a small battery upgrade, but nothing too crazy. And here's a clever twist. Those Super Draco engines on Crew Dragon, originally meant for emergency aborts, could potentially be repurposed for reaction control and orbital maneuvers around the moon. That means even fewer modifications are needed to make Dragon deep space ready. Of course, carrying a 12-ton Dragon inside Starship does eat into Starship's payload, dropping it from roughly 50 tons to about 38 tons on the lunar surface. But considering NASA's current HLS requirement is only around one ton, that's still massive overcapacity. So in theory, this hybrid Starship Dragon mission could give NASA a faster, cheaper, and more flexible way to land humans on the moon, all while using mostly existing flight-proven hardware. Honestly, if SpaceX ever decides to test something like this, it could redefine what we think a lunar mission looks like. Okay, so we've talked about the idea of sending a crew dragon inside or attached to Starship for a lunar mission, but let's be real. Crew Dragon was originally built for low Earth orbit missions, so if we're sending it all the way to the moon, a few key upgrades would absolutely be needed. First up, the heat shield. Crew Dragon's heat shield is made from Pika-X, a high-performance material that's actually capable of handling the extreme heat generated when returning from lunar velocities. The problem isn't the material itself, it's the thickness. Right now, the shield isn't thick enough for a full lunar return because of weight constraints. To make it moon-ready, SpaceX would need to thicken the Pika-X ablator layer and reinforce the structure that bonds it to the capsule's frame. That means stronger backing materials, improved bonding, and possibly even new design tests to ensure the shield can survive longer, hotter re-entries from deep space. Now SpaceX already has experience here after noticing some erosion on early crew. Dragon heat shields, they made several reinforcement upgrades. So a more advanced iteration of that same process could prepare Dragon for lunar missions, especially if they want it to be reusable for multiple deep space returns. Next, let's talk about Starship, because carrying crew Dragon, whether inside or on top, comes with its own serious engineering challenges. Here's what SpaceX would likely have to modify. Structural reinforcement Starship's payload bay or nose section would need to be strengthened to safely hold Dragon's 12-ton mass, especially during launch, when vibrations and aerodynamic forces are at their peak. Aerodynamics. If Dragon is mounted externally, SpaceX would need to design a protective fairing or aerodynamic shroud to reduce, drag prevent buffeting, and shield the capsule during ascent through the atmosphere. Docking and integration systems. Starship's interface ports would have to be reworked to fit Crew Dragon's docking hardware. That means new attachment points, custom deployment mechanisms, and safety systems to handle separation or redocking in different mission phases. Thermal protection. The Starship surface near Crew Dragon would need extra heat shielding to manage the localized aerodynamic heating during ascent. Internal configuration. If Crew Dragon rides inside Starship engineers would have to redesign the internal layout to keep it secure, while still allowing easy access for pre-flight checks and integration. All these adjustments are crucial to maintain safety margins and mission reliability, since we'd be combining two spacecraft that were originally designed for completely different purposes. One for Falcon 9 launches the other for a fully reusable two-stage system. Integrating them would require deep structural thermal and aerodynamic analysis, plus rigorous testing to prove the concept works. But here's the thing, if there's any company that can pull this off quickly, it's SpaceX. Their rapid design test iterate approach means they could prototype test and refine these changes in record time.
all right? So the idea of sending a crew dragon inside Starship for a lunar mission sounds awesome. But not everyone's convinced. In fact, some people in the space community say this whole concept might actually be impractical. Let's break down why. First off, the landing and return problem. If you only launch one Crew Dragon capsule, the mission basically turns into a wave hello to the moon as you fly by scenario. That's because Crew Dragon simply can't land on the lunar surface, at least not in its current form. Now, SpaceX once had a similar concept called Red Dragon, which was supposed to land on Mars using supersonic retro propulsion. Here's how that would have worked. After entering the atmosphere, at supersonic speeds, the capsule would fire its Super Draco thrusters to slow down skip the parachutes entirely and then use retractable landing legs to touch down softly. It was bold, innovative, and incredibly complex. NASA considered it too risky for crewed missions because propulsive landings would require years of testing and certification to meet safety standards. Basically, you'd need to re-engineer almost the entire spacecraft just to prove it could safely land with humans aboard. And that's exactly what critics say would happen here, that modifying Crew Dragon for a lunar mission would mean designing engineering and building an entirely new spacecraft. Then there's the return issue. Right now, Crew Dragon can't make the trip home from lunar orbit. Even with upgrades integrating it with Starship, introduces a ton of new challenges that SpaceX has never faced before, and none of these modifications are part of Starship's current development roadmap. If Dragon is mounted on top of Starship, it could in theory still use its abort system, but that would completely change Starship's aerodynamics and launch profile, meaning SpaceX would have to redesign major parts of the rocket. If placed internally, Adapters would be required to allow fuel lines and other volatiles to pass through the Starship's walls, and it doesn't stop there, even launch infrastructure would need to change. The Starship launch tower would have to be modified with dedicated fueling and loading systems, like those used for Crew Dragon's Falcon 9 setup. That's a massive logistical headache. So when you add up all the design work testing and infrastructure costs, many experts argue the idea just doesn't make economic sense. The costs and time required to make this hybrid system safe and functional would outweigh any benefits. 